Hello guys and welcome back to another MCR tutorial. Today I'm going to be explaining how Forge Energy works and the different types of blocks and then we'll take a look at a couple of example scripts that I've set up to basically work with um, Forge Energy and stuff like that. So I want to actually explain the blocks first uh, before we actually get started so you guys have a general idea of what everything does. There's quite a few different blocks in here. Uh, some of these are for fluid, um, forge fluid, which is completely different than forge energy. So uh, things that you see fill and drain, uh, these are basically um, things that will be for fluid. Uh, these uh, tank capacities, tank, anything with tanks will also be for actually getting the um, water fluid and stuff like that. Most of the energy blocks are up up here so basically what these ones do uh, can block at extract energy from on side so basically what this one will do is it will test if the very if the block at the location can extract basically energy from the uh, specific side now you can replace that any direction now any direction can be um, set so if you want to um, have just it pull energy regardless of what side then you can basically allow it to do that now however if you want it to um, be a specific side that you want to pull from and test from then you can go under uh, Minecraft components I believe and then grab a block like this and then you can basically place that in here and then you can specify what side that you want to test for where it can basically pull from. Now with that being said, uh, you can actually specify a little bit more and you would put that onto a if statement and then you would run something inside of that particular procedure. Now offsetting the coordinates, uh, you can do that with a math operator, uh, something like y plus one would basically go ahead and shift the test location for the block up one block and then it would basically test from that block above and test if it can extract energy uh, from that side. There is also one called um, receive energy. So this would basically allow you to test if the block can receive energy. Same idea as the top one. Uh, the two blocks down here, um, pardon me, these ones right here, uh, test extracting and then there's value energy from block and then the block that it's currently at from side and then the side and then return amount um, extract and extract. What this will basically do, these two blocks here, is it's going to test extracting energy and get a return value. So for example, if the block can only extract uh, 25 and we test if it can extract 100 then, 100, then we can apply this to a variable and we can only extract 25 instead. So it will get the return value of how much it's going to actually be able to send until it's full of the capacity. So these are really handy blocks and it will get a return value on how much it actually sends without actually sending it until we need to actually send something. Uh, these two blocks right here are for basically sending and extracting. So basically what we can do is we can send either a set number of energy, which would be a way to do it, or we could set uh, at the tested value of energy so we don't waste actual energy. So for example, if you wanted to do that, what you would want to do is you would basically go something like send, and then you would get a variable set up. You would need a number variable. And then what you would do is you'd go ahead and just give it something like power and then you would save that and then what you would need to do is you would need to set the variable uh where's the variable variables and then we'll scroll down grab this one right here and then what we would do is we would go back to forge energy test sending and then we would test sending to the block that we want to basically get the or send the energy from or send send the energy to. So say if we wanted it something north, then we could basically go ahead and set this to negative one Z and that will basically test if the 
block north of this block is able to get the power or send 100 power. Now this will return the value that it is. So say the maximum power that it can actually receive is um, like 50 or whatever, then this value will basically try 100, but 50 won't be able to go full and it will return 50 to this. All you need to do after that is basically just replace this block with your power variable and it will basically send only 50 instead of 100. So that's basically that, but you would also need to also set up the coordinates for that same block. So in general rule of thumb for forge energy, um, blocks don't actually extract uh, generally um, from other blocks. It's mostly um, kind of an offensive kind of a strategy where the blocks will try to send power instead of pull power. So most cases you'll need something like this for your procedures. Uh, the other thing that you might want to take in consideration is direction and stuff like that as well. Um, those generally, we'll cover that in a little bit, but uh, there's other blocks in here, for example, uh, get energy capacity of blocks. So this can actually test if the block is filled already or if it is still has room. So for example, if you wanted to um, go ahead and for some reason you wanted to test if the block is lower than a certain value, um, we could do something like a math operator, test if the block over here is basically less than, or pardon me, we'll test uh, the capacity of block is less than the current block, and then we could basically do something like that. So if the current block is less than the maximum capacity we can send power. I'm not sure why you would need to do that, but it's just a example. So you, you can test the capacity of the two different blocks and send based on certain things. I'm sure someone could find a use for that, honestly. Uh, the other things are um, get energy of current block. So this one is rather than the capacity, we can test for how much the block actually has in energy. So this is very useful one when actually creating scripts. So instead of um, testing the capac or capacity of the current block, we could actually go ahead and test if the uh, energy of the block that we're going to be sending to is less than uh, the capacity. So if it's less than that, we could basically send it. Again, with this system right here, you wouldn't actually need to send any value as long as it's zero, but this could fix a little bit of lag if it was constantly sending energy or something like that. But um, in most cases, it's probably pretty stable. So yeah, th those are the Forge Energy blocks. I don't think there's any other ones in here that are really worth talking about. Other ones are pretty much for um, actually sending in stuff for fluids. So those should be the, the only blocks that you need up to this point here. Uh, the direction though, um, this can actually be defined a little bit more specifically for getting power on certain angles. Now by that, uh, what I've done with the workspace is I've set up cables. Uh, these are just basic cables. They're not really designed to anything special, but uh, the blue one, the blue icons are basically inputs and the red icons are outputs. So what I've done is uh, the front direction is basically the, um, the output for the blocks right left and top and down so the only input is the back uh, the other things that I've done is I basically have it so it isn't rotatable that's probably not <laughs> exactly great but um, I'll explain a little bit more so basically with this I'm running different cable directions so what I've done if we go into procedures and then cable update tick that's the one that we're just currently in and then we have the script. So these are the little scripts that I have set up for the down direction. What this is going to be doing is it's going to be using Forge Energy. Uh, well, not Forge Energy, but um, the 
workspace namespace and set a tag for different directions for different blocks. So for example, at Forge Energy, which is the namespace of the mod colon energy uh, input. So that would be just for the tag category that I put it under and then the slash for the actual determining of the next folder. And then I've basically determined front and back. Now this is really up to you how you want to set it up. But um, what I've done is basically gone ahead and test for the blocks direction. And if the, the direction is a input of front. So if the input is front for the block that we're testing for north, then what we're going to be doing is we're going to basically run this script. Now, the other thing that it can do is it can test if the uh, block north is input back. So basically what this will do is it will test for if the input of the block um, basically facing the direction over on the other side is an input back or an input front, and it will basically test for the rotation based on that block. So uh, for example, if it's in the front, it's going to be facing south from this particular block in order to hook up. But if it's uh, a back input, then we would want to make it make sure that it's north. You do this for each direction. So you could basically set it up. You just add extra or statements and basically copy this part over uh, depending on what you need. But I kept it short so it's a little bit easier to see. Uh, after which I am basically going ahead and testing the send or applying a variable called energy. That's the variable up here. It's a number variable. I'm testing sending and then I'm getting the energy capacity of the block and then I'm dividing that by five. The reason why I'm dividing that by five is because the block has five outputs. So each time that this procedure runs, it's going to basically lower the division rate by one value. So this one down here for the um, other direction is divided by four, divided by three, and divided by two, and then divided by one. So if these conditions actually run true, then what it'll do is it'll basically extract so basically we're just extracting the value that we can actually send and then we are sending the value over to the block that we can actually connect to so basically if the block is facing the right direction then it will basically try sending the value but also it will extract what is in the current block so extraction can actually be used for lowering the value of the forge energy as well as you can see so if we wanted to actually drain what's in the block then you would use extract on the same block so that's basically how that works again uh this happens for all the different directions I'm not sure which ones are which. I think this one might be south. No, this one's north. This one's south. Um, this one's west. Uh, this one is east. And then we have the down direction. So those are the different directions where it will basically try sending, which makes sense because it's the down script for the block. Now, that's only running if the block is facing down. So... I'm not sure entirely if that would possibly work, but um, <clears throat> yeah. So basically that just gives you an example of how it works. Uh, basically the inputs for the other cables, there's a generator which has an output. So we have also a GUI and stuff like that. I'll make sure to provide the workspace so you guys can take a look how everything's set up. So the generator has a on... Um, generated player when player tries to destroy so what it's going to do is basically send a message when the player tries to destroy the block just so you can see the output uh, it's best to be in the what do you call it, uh survival mode so you can actually see it without destroying it and the update tick is basically which is the main procedure for running it so basically what this is going to do is it's going to get the energy from the block itself uh test for an item in the slot so in this case we're testing if there is kelp i guess it's similar to a biofuel generator and then what it's going to do is it's going to uh, have a burn time so basically i've set it to eight, 800 so if it's uh, burn time is less than 800 then what i'm going to do is um, 
increase that value by one. So basically it'll count up all the way to 800. And if it reaches 800, then what it's going to do is it's going to set burn time to zero. And then it's going to send 50 um, energy to the uh, current block. And then it's going to basically keeps it at, at the current block. And then it's going to remove um, any items or remove one item from the slot zero, which is what slot it's currently in. So that's basically what that's doing. And then we have these other generation um, conditions for the rotation. So that's very similar to this method. Uh, if we go back to the script and then we have the downside again, all these different sides. This is basically just what I've done for pushing the energy Again, we're testing the block's direction, then we're testing if the input is um, in front or back, depending on what input side. Uh, this allows for more cross-mod support, I guess, in certain conditions. And then we have, we're have we basically doing that same energy trick that we did before, so we're just testing if we can send the current amount of energy that it has, and then we're going to basically just send as much as we can uh, with it testing and it will send what it can over to that um, Z block or the bl block below. So that's for the generator. And then the other thing that we have is the machine. Machines are a little bit different. They just consume energy more than actually generate energy where generators mostly just generate energy. Uh, cables can both receive and take. So they're a little bit trickier to do. And again, we have the machine block, same thing. We just have a front side for the input. And then we have our update tick, which is basically going to test if the energy value of the block is equal to or greater than one. And then we're going to extract one energy. And then what for each, for each entity, what we're doing is we're going to actually, um, from the center of the block, we're going to in a square cube of uh, 513, so about 512 blocks away from the actual block itself, we're going to get a subtype of mob entity, and then we're going to apply a potion effect for all those entities with glowing. So basically what this will do is it will light up any monster entities or any mob entities that are classified as mob with the glowing effect. So we'll test this out in game in just a second quickly. But that's basically what it's doing for the energy. Now player starts to break. Again, this is just to show that, that how much energy it actually has. I'll explain more when we actually go in game. So yeah, that's basically that. Um, all I really have to say is play around with the, the mechanics a little bit. Once you kind of play around with it a little bit, you'll understand how everything works. Uh, I think this um, tutorial pretty much explains the basic of the blocks that you need to fill with to work with and how they actually function um if you have any questions of course you can always ask them in the comments so let's quickly take a look at the mechanics that i do have set up and then we can kind of go from there all right so we are currently in game and as you can see if we go around and look at all the entities in this particular area you can see that a lot of them are lit up in our general facility of these two blocks so if we right click on the generator you can see that it's basically um, less than 64 for a stack I actually put 64 in and it's been generating energy if we try to destroy it you can see that it has um, 300 of a thousand so that's basically slowly increasing over time uh, this one is already at a thousand but it's can um, this is our machine block and it's basically generating the uh, the effect for all the entities around the vicinity. You may also notice that things like the um, bats and other creatures like the ozolots are, or not ozolots, the, um can't remember what those ones are called, those little fish-like creatures. Those are also coming up like on the radar as well. As well as like things like Endermen, spiders, possibly zombies, and skeletons as well. So it's just something to keep in mind when you use the um, mob entity is that everything will come up on the thing if it is considered a mob entity. And uh, like I said, the bats and stuff are considered mobs. So um, yeah, so that's basically it. Let's take a look at the power. So you can see it's gone up by 50 and the fuel has gone down a little bit, I think, possibly. I think it was at 58, wasn't it? 
58, 59, somewhere in there. It just went down to 56, so there we go. But uh, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, let me just uh, go into creative quickly, and I'm not sure how to do that really. Uh, there we go. And then creative mode, and then we'll get out of my glass containment so it wasn't being attacked by any mobs. And then we'll just place down a generator. As you can see, it can place different directions. Uh, we're going to set that up for our cables. Not sure where I put the cables. There we go. And these don't actually rotate. I didn't put too much time into it, but we would basically hook up the generator so it's facing the input. And then what we would do is we would basically get our machine. We would put it on something like our output like that. And this should work. Uh, we'll just grab some extra fuel from here. Destroy that so all the entities kind of just go back to their normal state. Put some fuel in here. Oh, I'll put that back. Uh, maybe I didn't get the coordinates all set up or forgot a variable, but in general, that's what you would have to do. You have to make tests for each direction of the block, get all the different outputs and stuff like that. But uh, it seems that I might have not gotten the coordinates right, possibly. Or maybe it's just not high enough for the power yet. That's possible, too. So there we go. I got it working. So might have just been not the enough power going into the machine. So as you can see, everything is lit up again. So that's basically how it's working. It might take a little bit of time for the power to kick in and actually get to the machine itself. I think some of the power gets tries to get between the blocks and stuff like that. But yeah, outside of that, um, yeah, I'll leave the download on my, uh, what do you call it? The GitHub repository. You guys can play around with the settings, see how the mechanics I set up in the tutorial work. And I won't provide the procedures because it takes a lot of time to do. And honestly, it's just more of a tutorial on using the blocks than actually playing with it. So if you install the workspace, um, I haven't actually done a tutorial on that. So what you can do is you can go to the launch screen. So you'd have to open up mCreator. And if you have the workspace, I always provide the workspace. And then you just go open workspace. And then you would search for the workspace. I uh, usually have it on my desktop if there is one. And then you just basically select the, um, is that the one? Or import from file. Might be import from file. Uh, yeah, it would be import from file. And then you would basically select the zip file that you basically would be opening the project for. So for example, if uh, it says workspace, I always name them workspace or I try to. The newer ones do. And uh, that basically just indicates that that's the file you want to Im import. A lot of the files that I do bundle together are with other files. So generally, if it doesn't say workspace, most likely it's all the project files with the procedures and stuff like that. But there will be a folder with a uh, workspace that says workspace, and then there will be a zip in that folder. And then you just basically import it through that method. You just import from file, and then you would select it, and then it will set up the same workspace and name like this. So in our case, it'll give you all the different uh, blocks and tags. Now the tags, again, I've basically assigned for the inputs for the sides here. This is the input back and you can do input fronts and stuff like that. This is the input front. This is uh, applied to the machine block where the other one is applied to our cable. And uh, the other one uh, for the, the generator only has a output slot so it doesn't actually go into either one of these categories. But you can kind of get a general idea how it all works. Um, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.